Abhishek came and to do. Uh, to give you a brief introduction about myself, I'm, I'm deeply interested in large-scale data processing infrastructure and mathematics. Currently, I work as an engineer at Airbus. So, if, if you haven't heard of Airbus, it is an intelligent customer support dashboard. So, we we listen on 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 all of on, on all of social media, and all these data keep coming in our stream, and we automatically classify them into an actionable or non-actionable customer query. So, so. You, like, like you see, it's a humongous amount of data that is coming in. Right? So when you when you have a lot of data that's coming in, your the the, yeah, the amount of things that you do with the data also starts starts increasing. That's with, with, with such a system, you you just don't have any one size fits all frameworks. So mo most of the frameworks that you have are is completely heterogeneous. So, so you you end up you end up building. I mean, you end up spend, you end up, your infrastructure just get, keeps getting com complex and more complex. So that is that is you no know, just getting around to it. You are building a distributed system. So I mean, imagine right today, today in this world, in this uh, cloud computing age, when you start building an application, uh, it, it can be as simple as a rates up, but, but when, when you scale it, it's uh, out of nowhere. It's 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 a distributed system. So I, I mean, the, the, this is this is a paper by the, this is a the, this is the title of a paper by Mark Kovaj of Joint. I saw it in one of one of the talks, and I just liked it so much, so that just put it up there. So <laughs> to, but when you have when you have so much when you when you have such a complex infrastructure, there are just two. Two paramount things that we care about. One is high availability, and of course, fault tolerance, and, and then maximizing your cluster utilization. Right. So, today, what, whatever I'm going to talk about is going to be centered around making sure every, how how to how to build a cluster which is highly available, completely elastic, and is fault tolerant. So, and here, yeah, of course. How we are going to do this is around this with Mesos and Docker. So what's high availability? So you have all these, uh, as name as, as self-explanatory as the term is, high availability is just making sure all your services are running. Even if, for example, let's say you have 10 instances of your apps are running, even if one goes down, you may it's sort of all the requests that are coming in is load balanced across the remaining nine servers. So, I mean, you, it's like making sure that even if, uh, of course, in, in, in a distributed system, you cannot always ensure that, you know, not, uh, a, a server is never going to go down. So servers are built to go down, right? So it, 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 even if this happens, we are, we are going to be highly available. So next, next one is when I also like I was saying when when there are just so many frameworks, you for example uh, you have so many frameworks, right? So when you have, when you want to deploy so many frameworks, what you what you usually end up doing is um, you you said you you have this cluster and you start start to ded start dedicating machines machines to to this framework separately. So, what what end up what end up and also this this is also about capacity planning, right? You you don't it's really really hard to figure out even even an n number of different services which are running. How do I how do I figure out what is the what is the most optimal configurations of, of the service that I need to deploy on, deploy on my cluster? So this is allocation is hard. Uh, and even even a completely elastic environment, it's even harder. And and all of these frameworks, like for example, let's let's take Hadoop or Storm. The, the, uh, each one of these frameworks, they, they're they're super rigid in terms of what they want. So, for example, if you want to run uh, 
Hadoop and MPI on the same cluster, but with, with what is happening right now, it's, I, I, I don't know how you do that. Imagine, right, you have the same data set and you want to um, that, that do two different jobs. One, one is like a simple analytics analytics job which you can kick off as a map to use, map to use job, and another one is some some like an, an IKU machine machine learning thing that is happening, but they want to operate on the same data set. So what in, in such a scenario what, what most people would end up doing is you you do, you partition the cluster of course and you allocate one part of the cluster to you and the other part of the cluster to MPI to you know to you here is your data you just you 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 take care of whatever you want to do but but that's 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 not really efficient because you're replicating your data and your cluster all across for the MPI for all, all of these new frameworks that need your data. Right? So how how about I mean, doing this is hard. How about a resource allocator, right? I mean, if, imagine, imagine your computer. You have, you have like what? For example, this computer has eight gigabit of RAM and and, and an iPhone processor. So you just you, you just you don't you, when you write an application, you don't really, you know. Uh, your operating system just takes care of scheduling each one of these jobs for you. So the whole idea is Apache Mesos, like the name suggests, is, it is, is one of the top Apache projects. It was it came out of a research paper published by Bench Bench Hinman at UC Berkeley. So uh, so later on when he joined Twitter, he brought brought in the project. It, it, it Twitter and like the mo most of their infrastructure is being powered by Mesos. There are a lot of other, other companies like Airbnb, Open Table, and Capitalist, which are using which use Mesos at, at the core of their at the core of their infrastructure. So I mean, what was what was the deal with Mesos? It's obviously that this is like the textbook definition of what Mesos is doing. Apache Mesos is a cluster manager that provides efficient resource isolation, sharing across distributed applications. Yada yada yada. So, I mean, in, in, more, in the most simplest of the terms, Mesos lets you treat, treat a cluster or a data center as one single computing entity. You, you guys, have, how many of you have heard of the term of Vero scale computing? Or, or good or probably good old days of Condor. Condor is just so old that it's present in engineering textbooks. So if the whole idea is, for example, let's say you have a cluster with 10 nodes each with, uh, there's each with four gigabyte of RAM and um, four, four cores of CPUs in each, each one of them. What you, what you actually look at it as uh, a huge machine with 40 gigabyte of RAM and four, four, four cores, right? So that, that is that, that is the whole idea behind Mesos. Mesos lets you treat all, all of these different, all, and of course, all these are commodity paid servers, right? You you don't. So yeah, uh, going deeper into the architecture. Uh, so Mesos uh, Mesos runs in a master and slave configuration. Uh, Mesos master runs in a higher availability mode, and uh, uh, like like an all the speed system, Mesos <laughs> it, it's, it's Mesos master runs in a soft state. So at any given point in time, the state the state is main, the state of the master is maintained as a replicator log on on this on, on this in this zookeeper forum. So what what happens is even if one of these masters go down, the, when the other master comes in, it can use those replicator logs and. And, and come come back up as the masters, right? And so, and you have these Mesos slaves which are installed across all the nodes in your data center. So, so yeah, and so of course, like Zookeeper is going to take care of your leader election. It is going to take care of your leader election, and it's going to take care of telling your slaves that hey, the new ma the master has gone down, and this is this is a new master. So. 
let, let, let's look at this, right? So we have these two frameworks, the Hadoop and API, which which wants to which wants to make use of this um, all the, the resources available in, in, in a holistic manner. So what so what what it's going to do is the Hadoop scheduler would. The, any of these, these, these are called frameworks. So in Mesos, you have the Mesos, which, which is the way, imagine it has a substrate layer, and on top of that, you have these frameworks. And these frameworks have two components, um, a scheduler and an executor. So we will we'll talk more, we'll get more deeper into what, how, what a scheduler and an executor does. But, but, but yeah, so, so when the when the Hadoop scheduler is, is going to so this no the framework so these are two different frameworks right so they they want they they, they want to acquire resources in a cluster <laughs> so what it is going to do is framework A is going to say hey um, I, I I want two CPUs with four gigabytes of RAM each and and I probably want to run it on four instances. As if to, the, these, these, these combinations multiply by two or three or whatever numbers you want. So what happens is uh, your framework is going to, so the, through the scheduler, the framework is going to ask the Mesos master, what, what is the amount? Hey, this is, this is my job requirement. Is, is there anywhere on the cluster I can execute this job? So it's me, me, Mesos master is going to uh, do, do its computation on uh, obviously the scheduling are based on some fair, fair policies. You can also define your own scheduling your own scheduling policies. And also for example, let's say that this particular job it, you want that to be run on the GPU. You, you can also spe specify and whitelist these are the only servers I want to run this job on. Hey, don't give me it. So it, it, it is like these, these are called filters. So before we get into filters, so when uh, uh, Mesos Masters figures out that it has actually got, got that something that it can actually send back to the framework, so the framework is going to receive the offer. It's called, it's, it's called a resource offer. So with, so with the resource offer, what it is going to do is it, it is going to, uh, it is going to see for, for example let's say Hadoop Hadoop works with the whole idea behind Hadoop is acquiring data locality right so if if when I run this job if if the resource that is allocated to me is not going to let me let me attain data locality I, so the framework is going to just say hey I, I cannot accept this offer tell me when some something I want is available. So, so the frameworks can uh, can reject offers. This is the beauty of it, of this framework. So, in, mo in most of the scheduling frameworks, what what usually happens is it's like uh, it's most of the scheduling frameworks are one size fits all, right? They they try to abstract away this whole concept of hey, these these are what these guys want. Let, let let me see how much I can offer. If he wants it, that's whatever he wants with it. So this completely decentralizes the process by letting frameworks decide whether it actually wants to run this job on this run this job on this particular machine or not. Uh, is there any, any more? Do you guys have any questions on this, or can I move on to the next? So. Building a framework on Mesos, so you you have right now you you we saw that right? each framework that needs to be run on Mesos has two components. One is a framework scheduler. One is a framework executor. So from from the earliest slide we saw, we we wanted to be uh, able to. We wanted each scheduler of the framework to be able to talk to the master and 
or I am in, in turn also talk to the executive, right? So, so we we need to. It's it, these are components that needs to be that needs to be implemented <laughs> by the framework. Whatever framework you done, it, the framework needs to support it. So, so uh, when there are two components, right? Because okay, you were my master, so you would probably have to end up implementing something like this for every framework that you want to run. Or whenever the framework is, oh, by, by the way, is it physical? <coughs> Executives for each one of these frameworks, right? <coughs> so, so this is where Marathon comes in. So, Marathon is developed by Mesos. You can use Marathon to to run long running jobs. Uh, it's just like a meta framework. It, it abstracts away the, this whole idea of uh, creating executives and schedulers for each one of these frameworks. So imagine if if Mesos is like an operating system on top of your on top of your cluster, or uh, Marathon is like upstart or in it. So but you but so in, in the Mesos cluster, the first job you run is is Marathon. So, so uh, this is how Marathon looks like. You we already have this. For forum and then there is Mesos master and ma then there is marathon job. Marathon can also run in an IO mode. So it, it basically take again it uses zookeeper to do its leader election stuff like that. So for example the, the, all, all these little boxes that you see now are, are jobs that are or actually services which is started by marathon. So you you, you have like what that, that is so that's so eight nodes and all of these have all of these have mission space installed. So so what man lets you do is you just specify you all you have to do is you just upload a jar or a tarball of all all your services encapsulated together, like all your application dependencies or all these things together into a tarball and just give it to marathon. Mar marathon basically lets you execute any bash it, it can it can it can run anything that is executable by bash. So you have your you have Elasticsearch now. So, so let's this is probably how one API request you submit a job. 
two resources for your math account. So you're probably going to say, keep the ID, ID of the app, and give a command as a, the command that you need to execute on each one, each one of these, and have the me your memory, CPU increments, and the number of instances you want, uh, the, the URA to pull, the, pull your tarball from, uh, your environment variables and the number of ports you want to use and the unique constraints or you, you can also set constraints in the sense for example I want the host names of each one of these to be unique. So when I launch, so so imagine like these are all like like you like you saw earlier, we can each each state can also have two services running on them. So it might also happen that two services when there is no control it might also happen that there is an elastic search or there is an elastic search running here and also another, another elastic search running there. If, if I set my uh, host name as a unique constraint, it's it's going to make sure that elastic that at, at any any resource name is going to have only one instance of elastic search running. And, and the best part about this is for example, let's say I, I if, I, if I have said if I have said that I, I only want like I, I want three instances of Elasticsearch running. Oh, if if this instance goes if this name goes down, uh, the marathon can automatically figure out that this has gone down and automatically locate the relocate the task on on, on some, some other node that's available. That's high availability, right? So okay, um, so this slave, let's, let's imagine this slave goes down. So when this slave goes down, uh, Marathon is going to find out that the slave has gone down at the number of, the, you, you, have, you have said that you want three instances of this particular service, service to be done in, and now, now the count has gone down, it is automatically good. It's, it, so it can figure out, figure out that some, it has gone down and it, it will automatically we launch this service on any of the uh, available if if, resource, if the a, a, any of the other place in the cluster where this resource resource matches where the resource availability matches. So I mean, Marathon is completely restful. You can all, all whatever job whatever services you want to run via Marathon, you just submit it via, via REST API or that is also a web UI which you, which you can use. For example, you, you, you can just, for example, you want to increase the uh, number of instances of a particular service from 5 to 10, you can, it's as simple as going, going to the dashboard and, and changing the number. I mean, that, that is just one huge drawback, right? You, you, whatever service you want to run, you have to supply a tower ball. I mean, seriously, who does that? Like, for, ima, imagine de deploying, de de deploying for, okay, yeah, I'm again using a group example. Like, it, it just has so many dependencies. And since you since you want to make sure that it's completely, it's highly available, what you what what you what we would actually end up doing is making sure that all the system dependencies are installed across the nodes so that this job becomes this job becomes easier. I mean this is such such a pain nobody wants to do this. So I mean how can we do this better? Docker. So, so imagine so how many of you know what Docker is or Okay, anyway, uh, Doc Docker is a container man management system. It, it, it lets you create file system images and launch launch an LXC container from them. Docker at its best is a container management system and it, it's it's a better image man file system image management system. So like th this is exactly similar to AMIs, right? How I, I I guess most of you use, most of you would be using AMIs. For every service you have out there you you have your AMI creator and whenever you want to launch it, you just launch it from AMIs. Docker images are just like that, but a gazillion times better. 
so this that comes to AUFS. So the AUFS is, is a copy on write file system. So what AUFS lets you do is you start you start with a you start with a base read only layer on top of that you can you, you can put as many layers of file system as you want. So in reality, so each one of these file, each one of these files is a layer you have on top of the base layer can have its own directory structure. Or, but, but and also these, these all these layers can be unified together and viewed as one one single one single file system. So 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 the best part about the best part about AFS is AFS enables. Imagine right the. So when you're creating AMIs, what you usually end up doing is it's you have to again create an AMI for for whatever virtual machine you are running it on. Like it's it's not you have, so with A what Docker lets you do is you, you start with the base you start with the base image on top of the on top of the base image. For example, whenever you add a service you add a sorry, not, not service, you add a dependency or whatever you install on top of the file system, you can make a comment. And only the diff of the, diff, diff of the previous state of the file system and the current state is taken and, and, it's, and it's pushed out. So each, each one of the changes that you, you make to, to your, your file system, when you deploy it, it's only, only the diff that travels. So you, So yeah, containers makes this whole managing application and system dependencies a piece. So now, now let, let's see how Mesos and Top, how, how all, I mean I spoke about just so many different technologies, right? Now let's see how all these things fit together, fit together in the equation. So what usually, what happens is you submit a job, uh, by the way, the cut, so I further talk about this. Mesos allows, when Mesos launches its tasks, Mesos launches its task in each one of the slave via an executor. So the, when the executor launches a task, it can, it can provide, it, it also does containerization and isolation. It does resource isolation. So how it does is it, it again uses the, uh, it again uses LXCs and, and C, C groups. <laughs> That's, that's how it, it provides isolation. So, in, in the recent version of Mesos, you can what it lets you actually do is it, it lets you do external containerization. So, external containerization is uh, some is like, for example, hey, uh, like how we were writing our framework frameworks in Kedula, right? You can just write a plugin to take care of the containerization for you. So, this kind. So, and Marathon. Uh, Marathon has another project called Demos, which is an ex which is this external containerization plugin. So, so it sort of fits really, really well into the Marathon ecosystem. So, like you just make a RESTful API call with, with, with just the container ID instead of sending the command. So what we send is we send the image, the image you the image you are you have your Docker registry and the image you are from the Docker registry and the options to run this command. So you do a Docker run and this is basically the, the other positional and keyword arguments that you pass to the command. So the executor is the uh, bad by the executor is present inside in, inside your Mesos name is properties or somewhere and say like say valid executor Docker. And you then, then then you just so once you submit the job it's going to go through the same process of Asking, talking to the ESOs and figuring out whether there is a, whether there is some place on the cluster where it can run this run this service. So it is going to get back to Marathon and Marathon is going to say, hey, okay, yeah, it, it matches with, with what I want and it's going to launch, run, run, tell it to the slave and the executor is going to. So this executor is going to la launch. Tell the Docker, Docker daemon on coming in inside the state to launch this this command. So now, now that we have passed in all of our app dependency as a Docker image, 
so this Docker daemon can automatically pull it from the Docker registry and just start running it. So, it, so it, it's it's uh, Docker. It's it would be a lot faster when when uh, when this executor has already run this when this uh, state has already run this service because the cap the image cache would already be present. Otherwise, it will have to pull down the whole image, but then again, Docker image is the white. So, so in, in resource masters, you have, you have like resource master running at Delta X Marathon. Uh, in, in, inside the resource name, you have init, and then you have the Docker demon running. The Docker demon is going to take care of launching. This point just going to basically take care of launching and destroying the LXEs. So, so when the resource, resource, when the resource thing receives that, hey, I, I want you to run this job, it's going to tell the executor just to run the Docker run command with the option, options that we can. So, so putting everything together, so we, we have a base source to take care of resource allocation and high availability. Actually, it's both resource and marathon which takes care of high availability. But marathon apps, but, but marathon helps a lot more when you when you actually want to run a lot more services than what what is actually possible possible with all these frameworks that you can write. Uh, the other one is with Docker, you manage all your application dependencies. So it doesn't sort of paint a picture on how you can get them get a high lasting cluster. So yeah, uh, I'm open for questions. You can put your questions. So. Just very positive questions. That's exactly the whole point with Mesos. So, with with Mesos, you you have these all these Mesos slave running on all, all across your cluster, right? You, Mesos, your Mesos master is something that is external and it is going to take care of so submitting the jobs to Mesos slave. That's absolutely awesome. I mean, that's I mean, that's the whole point with Mesos. Yeah. How much time-wise? Have a job which takes three seconds. <laughs> does it make sense for me to deploy using this infrastructure, or would there be too much overhead to just deploy that? If if that that is if that is the only job you want to run, then probably does not make sense. But you but if for this job you are like for to run this particular job, you are setting up your allocating resource for it separately. For example, you have a couple of machines just to do this and this job is probably not like it, it does not happen all the time then it it, it makes sense to use mesos because when when that when when that mode is not working on this job it it, it can you can probably run one more ABS over there. But how much of an overhead does it add? Time Time as in the, the overhead is the overhead you have is maintaining the zookeeper forum right. and maintaining the meets, the meets was master because because the um, this is this probably does not make sense when you have a really really small deployment where you can like in the your things are not constantly changing or you don't want something like th this truly elastic. And then that's absolutely an overhead, but when when you cross probably a couple of hundreds of nodes, and you want to squeeze <laughs> squeeze the juice out of all all the all the machines that you're having in cluster. Th then it makes a lot of sense. And how does it monitor that you know this uh, particular computing resource has gone down or it's not responsive? How does it do that? How does it figure it out that it's not working? The job won't get done. Yet? Oh, 
I did not get it. Like, are you asking how does it, uh, your question is how does it figure out a slave has gone down? Yes. So you, you have Zookeeper, right? Yeah. So it is going to keep talking to Zookeeper. Zookeeper is basically a distributor coordination system. So it is it is going to keep coordinating between the master and the slave. So when 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 the slave goes down, it's work. it's going to miss a heartbeat. Using evidence for for messaging, communicate with other. Uh, it's it does it's it's a homegrown wire protocol. It's based on the actor model. So be, behind the scene, it uses some uh, library called Lib Cross. A C library called lib process. It allows you to program an after model. The, the, the messages that you send between um, the, mes the messages you send between the masters and slaves, these, these are all completely unavailable. But 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 it works. <laughs> it, it does not use rapid and pure. It, it, it's it's a wire protocol. Uh, the wire protocol is just history, but uh, it managed in, in an actual manner.